Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. My name is Svetlana Donova. On this week's episode, we are speaking to Ashley Ace. Ashley is the founder of Meditech, which is a Cape Town-based medical testing company. Ashley was recently named one of the Forbes top 30 young entrepreneurs for Africa. And I'm sitting with Ashley now in his Cape Town laboratory. Ashley, tell me about uh, Meditech. What does it do? Meditech is, or Medical Diagnostic, is a Cape Town-based rapid diagnostic test kit manufacturer. We manufacture diagnostic kits for malaria, HIV, pregnancy, drugs of abuse, and fertility. And basically, it's quick test. Um, you can get res results between 5 and, and 30 minutes. It's a very simple process. It's a three-step process that you need. Um, some of the kits use two-step processes. It's like sample collection, loading the sample on the test, and adding a, a what we call an assay buffer to it. Now, you started this business seven years ago when you were just 24, and you started it fresh out of varsity. Yeah. Tell me about what you studied and about that um, incubator process where you entered following university. Yeah. So, at university, I studied biotechnology. I studied at the University of the Western Cape and I completed my honours degree in biotechnology. Afterwards, I, I decided not to pursue my master's degree, although I got a scholarship for it. Um, the reasons for that, I wanted to be in industry. And um, I worked at the University of Cape Town afterwards doing genetics on HIV, but um, the same thing happened, you know, I was doing research to publish papers and I was not really in industry. So that's when I joined an internship program called Hellfire program, um, hosted by um, Acorn Technologies. And that's basically when I, I got involved in more business type of things in, in science, using business and using science to, to, to manufacture products for the business. And um, yeah, in 2006, I started Real World Diagnostics. How did you deal with the capital outlay that you needed? Because in order to do medical research and manufacture, you need quite a big capital outlay. Where did you get the initial cash seed funding for your business? So basically, I, I chose a different model of how to do this. I bootstrapped the whole business. I was 24 at, the, at this point in time, and you know, um, it's very difficult for a 24-year-old to close big deals. I basically looked at what was needed in South Africa. At that point in time, in Cape Town, methamphetamine took was a big problem. Yeah. And I identified that there's a gap in the market here whereby big pharmaceutical wholesalers are not actually catering for the lower income class individuals to be able to afford a quick test for TIC. That's when I approached my first biggest customer, Alpha Farm Pharmacies. I offered them this product as a CSI initiative. Um, and uh, yeah, I was 24 at that time. Uh, you know, I begged them to give me a, a, a slot um, during their board meeting, some board meeting there in Cape Town. Yeah. They gave me 10 minutes in lunch to present this product to them. And yes, I didn't need capital at that point in time because what I done was I negotiated my credit terms with my suppliers and my customers. I made sure my customers pay me before I need to pay my suppliers. So I bootstrapped the whole model and I generated enough cash eventually where I went national with these products um, to set up my own manufacturing facility. Okay, so you started off by outsourcing your manufacturing facility. That's correct. Yes. And when did you construct this factory here in Cape Town? Well, um, in the manufacturing facility was set up in 2011 in Musenberg initially and um, we set up our manufacturing facility next to our biggest customer. So our customer, um, ICT Diagnostics, very big in malaria test kits. Um, they export to countries like Pakistan, Papua New Guinea and all these uh, World Health Organization funded um, programs. Uh, we set up our manufacturing facility next to the assembly facility. So we basically then uh, developed and uh, produce the core components for them to assemble in their manufacturing facility. We initially, um, uh, we, we set up just a, a laboratory with a small assembly facility and we made enough cash to expand. And um, for eight months, we've been at um, our current facility in Brackenfell. Um, and yeah, we can do about 20 million test kits per annum here. Now, you touched on the tick problem, which when you were starting out prompted you to suggest the instantaneous drug testing kit to Alpha Farm Pharmacies. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, drugs are still very much a huge problem in the Western Cape, especially in um, areas such as the Cape Flats and the townships. Mm -hmm. How are you working with governments um, and your own test, um, drug testing kits in order to help fight the problem? Well, fortunately, government is putting a lot into, into the fight against substance abuse. Um, and recently, we've been supplying uh, the Department of Education, as well as the City of Cape Town, with these drug test kits. 
Um, we're also packaging it for them, and what they're doing is they're handing it out at schools. So we know that you know drug abuse is a massive problem, in, especially in Cape Town with methamphetamine tick being there. Um, the the big the big concern still is these what we call the five panel drug test, which can detect five classes of drugs. Um, it's quite expensive at a pharmacy level as well because we need to manufacture and sell onto a wholesaler. Yeah. It then goes on. Um, it will then go out to the pharmacy, and by the end, the end price, the, the public actually gets it at a very inflated price. And that's um, also one of the initiatives that we, we looked at, is how can we make drug testing cost-effective for everybody to afford? And hence, we are busy developing an application, mobile phone application, whereby um, a parent or a loved one can download a, an application to actually analyze the kids for drugs. Tell me, how does that work? Well, basically, if you're impaired, um, abusing substances, your pupil uh, won't react as per normal to light. So what happens is the pupil of your eye focuses the light so that you don't see blurry. And if you're impaired, if you're under a illicit drug or if you are abusing prescribed medication, the, your pupil won't contract to the light. And we know certain classes of drugs dilates the pupil, certain classes constricts the pupil. Heroin and morphine, opiates will constrict the pupil, whereas tick and cocaine will dilate it. And based on this, we, the, the, the application uses the camera and the flash of a cell phone to actually analyze the reaction to light. That sounds very interesting. Do you think it can be applied overseas easily as well? Most definitely. Um, the, the, the good thing about mobile apps, um, it's a good tool to have. Obviously, it's not something that you want to use in court, but it's a good tool for a parent who's suspecting their kids to be on drugs to actually have something to test them with. So the nice thing about that as well is it's face to face. Um, you will test your kid and you can see the reaction to it. You can, the, the program will say if the pupil's reacting to light or if it's not. If it's not reacting to light, it will then calculate the size of the pupil based on the light intensity. So if it's dilated, it will say it's a dilated pupil. If it's constricted, it will say it's a constricted pupil. And based on that, you can actually work at the potential class of drug. We've spoken about the international expansion possibilities for the mobile app which is definitely much easier. But tell me about uh, your export markets for the actual drug testing kits which you are making in Cape Town. Yeah. So we're a relatively small business. We are, we've developed a lot of intellectual property over the last two or three years. We've invested all our time and effort into making the best quality products at the most affordable prices. Because we know in Africa, you know, um, pricing is quite important. But without compromising the quality, you need to put a lot of effort and resources in the research to be able to still deliver a high quality product at a, a reduced price. So our primary focus at this point was more the malaria test kit. And um, because we've now got our ISO, SBS, ISO 1345 accreditation, we are now listing with the World Health Organization. So we are um, tracking towards proper um, export, the export market. Currently we are exporting via distributor and our biggest exporting product uh, is the malaria test kit. Do you think there's enough being done in the field of medical research on the continent? I do believe there's a lot of research done in the field of medical research on the continent. Uh, the, in my opinion, the biggest obstacle for entrepreneurs, especially scientists, is uh, access to funding. Um, as you could un imagine, being a scientist, developing scientific products means that you're going to have to do the research first. You're not guaranteed an outcome. There's no formulation or formula you can draw on a board to say that I can make this test. You will have to do it and, and, and prove it. And for that you need cash. So yes, I think the research is being done at the uh, university level is being done adequately. From an industrialization perspective, I think more can be done there. Because in China and India, um, uh, to my knowledge, government in, is investing a lot into what they call the tech parks. So your suppliers will basically be your neighbors in your park. And obviously that cuts down the cost of, of, of production. I think for most uh, medical research, for an entrepreneur to do it, he would have to be associated with a big pharma company that is going to be able to fund his research. And unfortunately, there are not a lot of those companies in Africa. Do you think government is putting enough uh, capital outlay in this field, the South African government is specific. Yeah, so when it comes to research and development, government's putting a lot of grant funding out there. So you, you do get what they call the IDC, Industrial Development Corporation Spy Fund, whereby uh, you get rebates back for spending in R&D. 
SARS, for example, they are giving you 150%, up to 150% tax deductible uh, uh, rebate for doing R&D. And um, the only concern is that with all these governmental grants, um, what I've, I've experienced was the red tape, the amount of documentation you need, the um, auditing is so intense, the timelines when they pay, it's all delayed. And uh, for that reason, I'm very happy for what uh, Minister Alan Wind is doing from the Democratic Alliance. Um, he started a campaign called Red Tape to Red Carpet. And he's put a lot of effort into helping us entrepreneurs actually um, bypass the so-called bureaucracy of, of the system of, of actually getting grant funding. Now, let's go to those entrepreneurial challenges. Red Tape is something that many entrepreneurs cite as the biggest impediment to starting their business. In your experience with Meditech, what was your biggest challenge, your biggest lesson? The biggest lesson for me was um, I was very young and naive, you know, we, we buy in business. Um, it's like life, you know, you, 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 you need to gain experience uh, to be able to understand how things work. And I'm very fortunate and unfortunate that this happened to me. I was part of a legal dispute. Um, basically, I developed intellectual property and I actually didn't protect it properly. I was very naive. Biggest lesson I've learned was take all your contracts to a lawyer. Do not think that you know everything. I signed a contract and unfortunately the contract I signed uh, basically um, in some sense handed over my IP to an individual and in return for the value that I've created I actually didn't get my money in return and this individual took me to high court and um, yeah it was very difficult for me to defend what I've actually said I'm, I developed because I've signed a, a contract that was loose ended. Okay, that sounds like a very expensive lesson. Yeah, it was about a 400,000 rand lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you don't DIY your legal requirements? Most definitely not. Uh, that's my advice to anybody out there, young or old entrepreneurs. Get all your contacts to a lawyer, make sure that you have a very good lawyer, and make sure that you do not proceed with adding value to another organization without having your contract in place first. Thank you, Ashley. That's Ashley Ace. He is CEO of Meditech. And thank you for watching more Entrepreneurial Edge next week.